Okay, in this week's Weather Extra, we're going to share some new insight that has just been shed on a fascinating phenomenon we've been seeing more and more common in our skies. Pyrocumulus clouds. This one was from September 13th off the Mosquito Fire. And thankfully, the rains that we had through late September really did a number on the Mosquito Fire in a good way. It's not out, it's not contained, but it's definitely lying down far more significantly than it was. But on September 13th, it was doing some really dramatic things. It was producing another pyrocumulus cloud. You can see the tops of it are poking up above the lenticular cloud that developed above the fire. There was a lot going on in this image on September 13th. The lenticular cloud is how this fire was shaping the weather around it. Lenticular clouds typically happen over topography. When the winds are moving very fast in the atmosphere, you get those clouds that look like UFOs. Well, we just happen to have one of those develop right above the mosquito fire on September 13th, and then the pyrocumulus cloud was extending up through it. We've wondered about pyrocumulus clouds over the last few years as we've seen more and more of them. Are they getting taller? Are they getting bigger? And as of last week, a paper that was published in the journal Nature answered that very question. One other way of looking at this, we'll switch over to the weather computer. It just so happened that when the mosquito fire was happening, there were researchers looking at it from every angle. They were flying around it in planes using LIDAR. They were driving to ridgetops where they could get a clear view inside of the plume using radar as well. Something called the California Fire Dynamics Experiment this year, studying these fires in far more detailed ways than we ever have before. This is what it looked like on the Mosquito Fire when you took a scan of the plume. And it's showing you how high the pyrocumulus clouds were going. The scale over here is in meters. So when that top of that cloud gets up to 10,000, that's telling you the top of the cloud was at 30,000 feet high. That's how high you are when you are in a commercial airplane flying across the country. These are the kinds of things now that actually have to redirect flights around them because the updrafts have gotten so intense and because they're getting higher than they used to. And here's how we know that now. Paper that came out a uh, week before last in the Nature Journal titled, Wildfire Plumes in the Western U.S. are Reaching Greater Heights and Injecting More Aerosols Aloft as Wildfire Activity Intensifies. Aerosols, another way of saying the particulate matter that small stuff that gets produced when you burn organic or not organic material, anything really, but it's the small stuff that gets into the air and then ultimately can get into our lungs, which is the primary concern for this stuff. How much particulate matter, how much of those aerosols are we breathing in? And the focus of this paper was to see how much more of that is getting injected into the atmosphere because these pyrocumulus clouds now coming off these fires are growing far higher into the atmosphere and are thereby able to spread that stuff farther than they could before. Ultimately, more of that then settles down to the ground and gets mixed into the bad air that we're breathing with. I won't stay on the image from the paper too long, but there's just one thing I wanna point out on here that's specific to us here at home. You're looking at a map of the West. See the deepest shade of red on there? That's the Sierra Nevada. They reserved the deepest shade of color on this map and in this scientific study to show you where pyrocumulus clouds have been documented to have grown the highest going back since 2002. So they're getting bigger throughout the West, but they're getting bigger than anywhere else here in the Sierra due to the nature of our fires, due to the climate that we've got here and the ability for fires in the Sierra to burn hotter. And the number that they put on this for pyrocumulus clouds if you average it out, going back from 2003 to 2020, each year over that time period, pyrocumulus clouds have been able to get 750 feet taller. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that number is just telling you what the average is over the year. If you take it as a whole, comparing where we are today to where we were in 2003, pyrocumulus clouds, the tops of them, are now going about 13,000 feet higher, and that is a significant number, and it's now documented as of this recent paper out of Nature. We've certainly been seeing them more. You no doubt have heard the term more in the last few years than you ever did in your life, and we all have in the scientific community. We didn't discuss these much at all. They've always happened, but they're happening more often now, especially under this fire regime, and now we know that they're actually documented to be growing taller and to have an undesirable effect 
on making the air quality a little more difficult to breathe. We can go back to that video from September 13th. It was incredibly dramatic to look at this on that day. Pyrocumulus clouds are always going to be impressive. The lenticular cloud just added to the drama on this. But these are things we're going to see more as the fire regime continues along its path. And the more we understand them and get a handle on what some of the impacts are, the better. And last week's paper was just one little added element to get some more clarity on where we are now in this fire regime and exactly how these pyrocumulus clouds have changed over the last 20 years. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagan will be in next week with another one.